If you have more Bears questions, we're going to get into a mailbag in a second, but I know not everybody watches our live shows, so if you have any other ones, DM me on Instagram, at HGramNFL. Sometimes IG is weird, where if you DM someone, it doesn't go through if you're not following them, so be sure to follow me first, at HGramNFL. Send me a DM. I always respond to DMs. Sometimes it takes a little while, but uh, I will get back to you. Bears questions, NFL questions, at HGramNFL. We will have it all covered. All right, I'm Harrison Graham. It is a Bears Now mailbag. Joey Kennedy, if the Patriots decide to go younger, would you trade a middle-round pick for Matt Judon, the edge rusher who missed most of the last season? He was off to a tear, four sacks in four games. He's been one of the better pass rushers the last few years, especially in 21 and 22, uh, 28 combined sacks in those two years. This would be kind of a Keenan Allen type of move, but less money. Any team that trades for him only takes on about $7.6 million bucks, which for Judon is an incredible number. But it would be Keenan, Keenan Allen-esque in the sense of expiring contract. Um, he's th- he's going to be 32 this season. You know, you probably wouldn't extend him. So this probably feels more of like a trade deadline move. Like if the Patriots are bad and the Bears need another pass rusher at the deadline, and look, New England's probably going to be bad this year. But if the Bears feel like, hey, we're we, – we're, we're on track to be a playoff team, and we could make a run with another pass rusher. I could see Ryan Pohl saying, hey, we'll give you a third-round pick for Judon, something like that. And even if you don't extend him, you take the rental for the uh, for the 10 games and potential playoff run, and you play the draft comp pick formula game, let him go in for agency. So uh, I like Judon a lot. Um, I think he'd be a good fit. I know New England runs a 3-4, but to me, he's, he's scheme-proof and would be a great fit. Would you trade a third-round pick for Matt Judon? Type T for trade, type P for pass. Again, I'd probably, you know, this feels more of like an in-season trade, but I wouldn't be opposed to it, man. Uh, You know, I I think this team is is one really good pass rusher away from potentially being more dangerous than we think. Poppy Chulo sits, get your running shoes on, Caleb. That's a classic Matt Eberflus quote, of course. Uh, we're filming this live on Thursday, so depending on when you're watching this, rookie minicamp's going on. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's time to go, man. Kind of the first impressions of on-field work. Bears goaded. Who would you rather take a big next step, Jervon Dexter or Tyreek Stevenson? Big, probably Dexter, because as long as Tyreek is at least picks up where he finished off, that's a starting caliber corner. You don't have a starting level three tech based on the level of play you got last year. Um, because you lost Justin Jones, who played fairly well, actually. And Javon Dexter, while he flashed, I wouldn't say he played at starting caliber, at least not consistently enough. So I think it's bigger for him to take a big step. Like, if he took a big step and Tyreek took, like, a you know a small step and was like, all right, he's a firm, very good number two corner, because I think he's already a solid number two. He finished the year very well. I could have to lean Dexter, because my philosophies in football, too, are this. Get the quarterback, protect the quarterback, go get the quarterback. That's how you won in the NFL. There's obviously a lot of other components. Uh, You need another guy who can go get the quarterback uh, as well. Ezra's art. Who will be on the hot seat if they have a losing record? I think it would start with Matt Eberflus. I don't think there's anything that could happen that would put Caleb Williams in the hot seat this year unless he just acted like a brat. Like if, if, if he struggles on the field but is still... You know, he's leading, and his teammates like him and stuff like that. Well, he's a rookie. That could happen. I'd be surprised. Like, I do think he'll have rookie moments, but I do think he'll at least be a solid rookie player. But if this team's like 7-10, and that probably means the defense did not continue that momentum from last year, by the way, because the offense is going to be better almost by default just because of the raw talent around the quarterback. That's regardless of the quarterback. Um, So I would say Eberflus 1, and then I guess Waldron 2, because maybe that means Waldron came in here, had all this talent to work with, and couldn't figure it out. Hunter Mitchell says, would you trade a second-round pick for Jonathan Allen? <sighs> right now, probably not. If it was my own second, I'd consider it, because you have that Carolina pick as well. But he's going to be 30. Again, he'd be a great fit. I think he's your plug and play three tech. Dexter can continue to develop and be a change of pace guy. Um, he could even play some edge for you. So I, I wouldn't hate it. I 
I'd rather it be a third. I know that sounds kind of tacky. It's like a second, third, who cares? But, you know, I, I, I'm not in the throwing premium picks for guys who may not be here long-term business quite yet. Now, I'm a second-round pick isn't going to kill you, but I, I would have to think about it. It's kind of a long-winded answer. Appreciate all the questions. We'll get to some more in a second. But first, got to tell you guys a little bit about our sponsor first. That is Prize Picks. Three million users active on a daily basis on the Prize Picks app because it's daily fantasy made easy. It's fun. Doesn't take long to sign up. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS to get a deposit match up to $100. You can withdraw your winnings once you build up enough money. Got some season-long NFL stat projections as well uh, with uh, DeAndre Swift, more than 850 and a half rushing yards. I like the more. I also like the more on a Monterey St. Brown, unfortunately. He had 10 touchdowns last year. I think he gets more than seven and a half, 10 to win 30 on that. And then with the WNBA getting going, Caitlin Clark, half a point. Uh, if she gets a point, you win. You just got to pair it with another player. So much of a good deal. Why would you not take advantage of it? Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS. NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, season-long NFL stat projections, WNBA getting going. You also got Major League Baseball. It's all available. It's Daily Fantasy Made Easy. Click and sign up today. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Code CLNS for a $100 deposit match. Braden, do you think Tyler Scott has said had, I don't know if you mean present or past tense, wide receiver three potential. I still think he does. He has tools that not a lot of players have. He's quick, but he's also a burner. He can win over the top. He did it consistently in college. His average touchdown, his last year at Cincinnati, it was a crazy stat. It was like 40-something yards, 50-something yards. Now, NFL's a different ball game, but last year, his issue was not getting open or the speed. It was drops, inconsistent route running at times, just rookie stuff. If he can clean that stuff up, I still think he can, which is why, yes, drafting Rome in some ways is a bummer for him because at best he's wide receiver four entering the season. But Keenan Allen's not here long term. If Tyler Scott shows you a lot this year, he could be your slot starter next year with Rome and DJ Moore on the outside. So I, I, I still like Tyler Scott. I think he can be a weapon. He needs to have a strong offseason here. Jaden Grimm, are there many examples of having of great teams with the defensive mind head coach in recent years? It seems tough to consistently keep a great team, especially if the OC or play caller has a lot of turnover. It's a valid point. It's why, even now, I'll still say it. I, I'm, I like Flus. I think he can be a good NFL coach. We know he can coach defense. The players respect him clearly. Poles definitely does. But it's why I still probably would have made a change. And you can't tell me that Ben Johnson wouldn't have taken this job. And hey, here's the good news. If this year flops, go hire Ben Johnson. He would chomp at the bit to come work with Caleb Williams. Now, we're not thinking that way. We're thinking this year is going to be good. But yeah, I mean, think about the, the final four last year. Kansas City Chiefs, offensive head coach who calls the plays uh, for Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. Detroit Lions, uh, offensive head coach, superstar offensive coordinator um, that runs the offense, which was top five in the NFL. San Francisco 49ers, one of the best offensive coaches. Kyle Shanahan, great play caller, has maximized Brock, Brock Purdy up to this point. And Baltimore Ravens. And all these teams have good defenses too. But Baltimore, Harbaugh, he, he kind of swings both ways. But they changed offensive coordinators, and they took a step because Lamar had the best year of his career throwing the football. So, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I think it's easier to, to sustain success for an extended stretch if your head coach is offense. Doesn't mean it can't work the other way, but I, I think it's a notable uh, thing to point out. Hit that subscribe button. Bears now comes at you every day with videos at least twice a week for live coverage, so don't miss out. YouTube.com slash Bears now. We're going to have you covered. You're not going to want to miss a thing. Go ahead and subscribe today. Henry Forte, Harrison, what are your expectations for the second-year players from last year's draft class. I think out of all those year two guys, I know someone asked earlier, Dexter versus Stevenson, I think Tyreek, by the end of this next year, will easily be the best player from that group. Because he finished last year that way, I thought. 
Um, you know, Darnell Wright obviously could be that as well. But Tyreek Stevenson just – he's a dog, man. He, he, he is a classic Chicago Bear. He's physical. He punches at footballs. He is not afraid to break on the ball and go for the interception. I mean, he is a big play maker. Um, I think that momentum carries into this year, and he you could end up – you could look at the end of next year and be like, is this the best cornerback duo in the NFL, Jalen Johnson and Tyreek Stevenson? And then Darnell Wright, I expect him like by the end of next year, it's like, okay, you've easily got your right tackle for the next decade. Um, after that, you know, I'm hopeful for Javon Dexter. Can Zap Pickens at least be a serviceable rotation player? That would be nice. But uh, And then Roshan, too. He's a player to watch. Can he unseat Khalil Herbert for RB2? So, a few question marks there. Matt Nagy, would you rather Bears have the number one scoring defense or the number 10 scoring offense? Number 10 scoring offense. Because even if the Bears don't have the number one scoring defense, it'll still probably be top 10. So... If you tell me your offense is guaranteed to be top 10 in scoring, you're going to be a playoff team. If this team is 10th or better in points per game, you will be in the playoffs because I trust that Flus, Eric Washington, and this defense will be solid. Caleb, how would you grade the Lions, Vikings, and Packers draft? Off the top of my head without looking at it, I would say I like the Lions the most – then it'd be flip a coin with Vikings and Packers. Obviously, I'm not a big McCarthy guy, but to only have to go up to 10 to get them, that's decent value uh, compared to if you had to go to, you know, four or six. Uh, Packers, you know, Jordan Morgan's a solid player, but I thought it was a little early for him. They found some good depth pieces. The Vikings also got Dallas Turner at 17, which is pretty damn good. So I thought all three – the North, I thought the North out of all the divisions probably had the best draft. This division is going to be hard moving forward. It just is, but – Hey, if you're at or near the top of this division, you're going to be a team that's built to win in January and hopefully one day in February. Kyle Bradley, order of quarterbacks on the NFC best to worst. Gosh. Um, let me just pull up the teams real quick. This is going to be helter-skelter. Bodies on the floor. We'll start with the North. How about that? I'll, I'll order them by division. It's too hard to do 16 starters at once. North – I'm going to go, at this exact moment, Jared Goff won, although he could be third very soon. But at this exact moment, I'd go Goff won. I guess I'd go Love 2, Caleb 3, and then whatever Minnesota trots out there for. But I think Caleb is more talented than Jordan Love, clearly. But he hasn't played yet, and Love finished last year strong. So if I'm, if I'm going to be a not-too-biased guy here, I would order it like that. NFC East, I would go... I'd give Dak a slight edge over Hurts, but Hurts has been better when he's made the playoffs, I guess. So 1A, 1B there. Um, I'll go Jaden Daniels over whatever New York's trotting out there, Daniel Jones or Drew Locke. NFC South, um, if Kirk Cousins is fully healthy, he's 1. Baker, 2. Carr, 3. Although you could flip that. If Baker plays like he did last year, I'd go Baker, 2. Carr, 3. Bryce Young, 4. NFC West, Stafford, 1. I'll go Purdy, 2. Kyler three, Geno four. That could flip as well, but I, I, I still like Kyler a little bit more than Geno overall as a player. So there you have it. You know the motto. FGB in the comments. Make it happen. FGB. FGB. We hate the Packers here. You should too. Otherwise, this probably isn't the channel for you. All right, like we said off the top, uh, if we didn't get your questions answered on this show, you can DM me on Instagram at HGramNFL. More coverage to come over there. It's at HGRAM NFL. Let's keep it rolling.